What is a hero? You could define a hero as someone noble, courageous, and willing to sacrifice for something bigger than themselves. Hello, I'm Titus Herman, CEO here at Southeastern Guide Dogs, and this is my favorite place in the world. It's the Southeastern Guide Dogs campus where heroes are all around me. They're the veterans who courageously served our country. They're the magnificent dogs who give these veterans the confidence to do things that most of us take for granted. They're the wonderful volunteers and donors who make all of this possible. Sometimes the military calls upon your courage, and sometimes it takes even more courage to ask for help. See what happens when veterans take that first step. I love nature and that I can share it with Stanley is just, it's incredible. What brought me to Southeastern, um, I guess it starts uh, back when I was in the military. I was in the Air Force and I was an air traffic controller. I uh, worked in Camp Lejeune, I was in the Navy. Was in the Air Force for 21 years total. I was active duty for four, a reservist for nine or 10, I can't remember, quite a bit. I served for seven years as a combat medic. So I went uh, to Iraq, I went to Afghanistan, and Iraq was very tough for me. We lost a lot of guys, a lot of buddies. I miss that, that, that camaraderie um, of, you know, we, we have each other's backs. Then all of a sudden everything just hit me. I, I, shut, I shut down, I shut down feelings. I, I learned how to survive. You have your ups and downs, just like anybody else, but they're more acute. So it's something that's very tough. I haven't been inside of a target. For some reason, that's, that's kind of one of my um, triggers. One of my major things has been nightmares for years. And then my anxiety was just off the charts. And that's when I started to get recommendations for a service dog from my psychiatrist. I don't know if I can, if, I, if I'm worthy of it. You know, I don't know if I would qualify. It took a couple of months for me to get up the nerve to finally, and then I finally applied. And then I got approved. Airplanes are not something I love, so uh, this was just about the only thing that would get me to get on an airplane. We're glad Christine set aside her fear of flying to start a new chapter with us. But sometimes our students can't come to campus, so we take our dogs to them, even if it's a mile high, which takes us to the Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado, where a facility therapy dog named Midnight brings light to every service member she meets. Midnight is our first therapy dog for the 140th Air National Guard. Good girl, Midnight. You're so smart. I am the 140th Wing Director of Psychological Health Services. Did you go for a walk? Good girl. I work at Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado. I initiated a program at Buckley Air Force Base with alternative wellness programs. Um, and with that, it just seemed natural at that time to go ahead and add pet therapy also. I've been uh, practicing in a mental health field for almost 27 years now. So I was very well aware of the benefits that pets can provide. Uh, noting that it, they release uh, cortisol and oxytocin, which are bonding chemicals that make us kind of feel happy. Do you want to shake? Good girl. And with research, uh, it shows that those chemicals are far reaching and uh, reducing the stress response. And so pet owners, and particularly those with dogs, generally live about seven years longer than those who don't. 
Midnight does a lot here. She is with me when I meet with clients to provide comfort and support, and she also does a lot of walkabouts. She's good at her job, and people tend to, um, you know, look at mental health as being much more approachable when you've got Mitty there to, to help out. Midnight is the sweetest dog ever. She's a love bug, she's extremely loyal, and she loves her people here. I won't deny she likes food a lot too. She's willing to do anything to earn a treat. And she's just a licker. When people come up, she just wants to love them up. She makes a difference every day. People want to connect more um, and share laughter and share smiles and walk her and play ball with her and just snuggle with her and cuddle with her. I've had an outstanding uh, experience with Southeastern Guide Dogs. We're extremely grateful uh, for your service to our service members. Certainly we want to give these dogs the best because they give the best to us. Our dogs always give their best because they begin training when they're just two days old. Many selfless humans have a hand in helping our dogs reach their greatest potential to become the smartest, healthiest, most skilled dogs in the world. But. When that coat comes off, our dog's personalities really get a chance to shine. See for yourself. It was always a lifelong dream to be able to raise a puppy to give back to somebody else. Smokey is high energy. She's resourceful, she's athletic, she's inventive, she can do it all. She, if she needed to do puppy parkour, she could do it all. She would go to the VA hospital, she would go to patients' bedsides and greet them. She had to learn how to navigate Ikea, we felt that was important. <laughs> she did great, yes, yeah, she did great. And she has excellent taste in furniture, too. <laughs> Smokey is an independent, athletic, smart little girl. She loves to run around, she loves to swim, she's very active. She is smaller, yeah, but she makes up for that with attitude. When we're out in public, she, her eyes are again like a laser beam on her person. She really wants to get that eye contact and stare into your soul. CW was the first puppy that we've raised. He was always just thrilled to see whoever would come to the house or any time we would go out. Twice a day, I would take him to a park that was fairly nearby. I would frequently get stopped by people that would want to take his picture and, you know, always told me, oh, what a beautiful dog. He got a lot more attention, uh, certainly, than I ever did. CW is another one of our gold adores. He's a really sweet boy, loves to carry things in his mouth, especially when he's excited. When he's in coat, again, he's very serious. He wants to make sure that he's with his person, he's paying attention to them. Roxy is one of our gold adores as well. She is really goofy out of coat. It's that same gold adore running around. Um, she's got a huge long tail that just whips around whenever she's very excited. And then when she's in coat, she's a little bit more serious. She pays attention to her person. She stays by their side. You know, she's working. So she's a very professional gold adore. Conway was so cute and he was much bigger than we expected. He's an independent thinker. He was very smart. He loved coming to work with me. He would also fall asleep under my desk and <laughs> snore during really boring work meetings. <laughs> we took him on a glass bottom boat ride at Silver Springs. Um, so that was super fun. He definitely loved to go um, for boat rides on the boat. 
The most memorable thing um, that we did with Conway was Justin proposed to me a few days after Christmas. When I unwrapped it and I saw it, Justin was down on one knee and Conway literally sat right behind him um, when he asked me to marry him. Conway is a very confident boy. He's very boy. Um, he's, he wants to do his thing and he's very self-assured of himself. Chenille is very smart. She loves to do new things. She's a lot of confidence and she has a laser beam eye contact. And she's very in tune to anybody who's feeling anxious. She's gotten really good at that. And she is very serious when she's working. She's out and she's doing her job. When we dropped Conway off, it was very difficult. We cried a lot, um, but to be honest, he ran off with the <laughs> trainers. Like, you know, not a second Man. glance back. She just took off and said, I got a job to do, guys. Boom. And she just left. Okay. Love you. Goodbye. When we dropped him off for IEFT, it went exactly how I thought it would go. CW was out of his mind excited to be here. And it was like he knew at that point that he needed to go to the next step. He was definitely like a, you know, I want to work kind of dog. Are you learning so many new things? The whole drive down here, I just felt like my heart was coming out, not through excitement, just through love and knowing that she's gonna live her purpose very quickly. He was excited to see both of us. But he wasn't over the top. Are you gonna are you gonna get a job? Huh? Have you been working hard? This reunion was definitely uh, really emotional because we really never expected to see him again. Knowing that our dog is gonna help one of these veterans, I mean I cannot ask for anything better than that. We see the, <laughs> the reason why we're doing this. Yeah, when you see the reason why. Sorry, I was trying not to cry during this. Um, you know, it just makes it all worthwhile. And I'd like to think that, you know, if I were in a position where um, I needed a dog, that someone would do that for me. So, yeah, it definitely makes it all worth it. My real hope for CW, and I told them this many, many times, is that he finds his best friend. Oh, you gotta hold your leash. You're so nice. CW, he's a goofball. As soon as I called him, he just came running, and he was giving me his leash, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't think it would be almost immediate, and it pretty much was, because she was just so excited. And then we, we loved on each other, probably for a good hour. Having her come in, uh, she was extremely excited. Nick called her name. She went from you know, sprinting all over the room and kind of met the camera and then came running to me. I was nervous, you know, like, what if she doesn't like me? But uh, the second she ran in the room, she was just a little love bug. So uh, that kind of took some of my worry away. Southeastern has done an amazing job matching the personality of the dog with your personality. He's a goofball, so am I. Uh, he's very adventurous, so am I. So I think it, they, they did a, an amazing job uh, putting us together. Humans and dogs usually bond quickly, but when someone's trust is injured, it takes a little longer. Kaylee Hinton's dad died when she was only five years old. Then her brother left for college. And when Kaylee and her mom moved to start a new life, she lost all her friends. Katie feared that everyone she loved could suddenly slip away. Then a wagging tail walked into her life and taught her how to love and trust again. All right, Lady Baker. Kaylee is full of glitter. Perfect. has a heart as big as a rainbow. 
she's very timid and shy around new people. That's not edible And I think she's a little fragile just because life has been a little tough to her. I was married to a very wonderful man, Terrence Hinton. Terrence was in the Army. He deployed. He saw a lot of things in deployments that he couldn't unsee. Afghanistan changed him a little bit. Then we had Kaylee, and something about a soldier and his little girl. Um, Terrence found comfort in her, and when they were together, it was like a the place that he got to go that was safe and nothing was going to hurt him there. She was his safe place, his companion, his quiet, his love. <laughs> yeah. Moving to Hawaii was like a dream come true for us. You don't think for even a moment about training or war or deployment or death. Every direction you look, it's beautiful and it's serene and everybody, for the most part, is kind and loving. Terrence was on the big island training with his unit for an upcoming deployment and um, Terrence was in a motor vehicle accident. They suffered brake failure and sent the vehicle into a barrel roll over the side of the cliff. And when the vehicle landed, Terrence was trapped underneath and he was killed instantly. I actually received a phone call from my sister-in-law, Monika, and she was screaming into the phone that her brother had died. I was just trying to wrap my mind around why she was saying this, what was going on. I, I knew at that moment I had to go home. I'll know when we turn the corner because the military doesn't leave until they get a hold of you. So getting closer to the house and we turned the corner and I, I saw them and they, they were at my house. And I remember they were holding this little white piece of paper and they started with, the Department of the Army regrets to inform you. And then they said my, my husband's name. And I just, I left this earth, like my body was here, but like every feeling in me was like I was, floating like I wasn't even there. It was just the worst moment ever. I, I lost everything. Trying to get Kaylee at five to, to understand the finality of death, that, ooh, that sucked. Kaylee slipped into a depression. She was just so withdrawn. She was afraid to leave the house. She had separation anxiety. She didn't want me to go anywhere. When we got down to Florida, it was supposed to be a new chapter for us, you know, meeting new people and meeting new friends. And I asked Kaylee, you know, why aren't you connecting with these kids? She says, well, do they know everything I love leaves or something happens to everything that loves me? And I. I just, my heart broke for her because I, I learned in that moment that she was looking for love, but she was afraid because love always leaves. And, sorry. I didn't know what to do for Kaylee. I didn't know how to make her happy again. So I was scrolling through Facebook one day and I came across a post from another Gold Star family of a little boy named Talon and his Gold Star companion dog, Hope. And I had no idea that Southeastern Guide Dogs ran a program for Gold Star families. I immediately started Googling, went to Southeastern Guide Dogs Facebook page, and I started reading everything I could. And I said, you know what? It was like meant to be, it was fate. And it was in that moment that I just felt like the magic starting to happen. The placement was perfect. They found the perfect dog for us. Hi, the first time I met Taylor, it was like, I was so happy, like, oh my goodness, they have a new dog, yes! 
it. I mean, I immediately wanted to play with her, cuddle her, everything. If feelings had a temperature, it was very warm and very loving, and I, I, I got misty-eyed just watching them because Kaylee gave her heart immediately. They hugged for so long, Taylor didn't pull away, she didn't run away, she didn't show interest in anything else. It's like Taylor knew Kaylee's heart needed some help and that's why she was here. And I just, I could relive that moment every day. It was beautiful. Taylor! T. Taylor is a goofball. Drink the tea. Taylor, you don't know how to drink properly. She's so silly. She never runs out of energy. She can switch from playtime right back to snuggle time, and she's just perfect. You want to cut out some dog bones? Taylor has brought Kaylee back to me. She's taught Kaylee to trust again, but most importantly, she taught Kaylee that it's safe to love again. So the thing that they do the most, you can't even see, they love. My hope is that one day she wakes up and even if the, her dad is the first thought on her mind, that it isn't one that makes her cry. My hope is that Kaylee will continue to love and feel the safety that love gives you. And I just hope that when she sees other people, she sees them for all the good that they are because we could have never been in this situation without generous people that we don't even know. Her tail's back here beating me up. <laughs> You haven't given us a dog. You gave me my daughter back because I lost my husband and Kaylee wanted to go with him. She just didn't, she didn't want to be here anymore. And now she looks forward to everything. Belly, belly. <laughs> These dogs are changing lives. They are giving lives back. They are helping people, children, my daughter, to feel like life is worth living again. I can't thank you enough. Like I, There's no words that I can sit here and come up with that are ever going to be good enough. There's multiple times every day that I thank you, and I will never, ever stop. So thank you a million times for the next million years. <laughs>Thank you, Jillian and Kaylee, for sharing your powerful story with us. We're so glad that Taylor's making such a big difference in your lives. Now, let's check in with our veterans and see how they're bonding with their new partners. Emerson Point is a beautiful park that's in Palmetto, Florida, and we take our students there during class for a little bit of decompression. Class can be very stressful for our students. We take them to a lot of challenging environments like malls and shopping centers. So nature can be really healing. Just being here a couple of days, you start seeing the progression and you start seeing the uh, improvement. Things have already started changing since I've gotten Chenille. Um, I've gotten to Target for the first time. He'll tell me when someone's coming up behind me. I feel less stressed when someone's approaching me now knowing he's in between me and that person. My bed used to be a place where I was kind of afraid to get into it, um, but now it's slowly returning back to that safe place that, you know, a bed should be for somebody. Um, and she's definitely been helping me with that. Sometimes I'll just sit there and talk and she'll sit there and listen to me. It's kind of weird how you know, he can do so much for you without him even doing anything. I haven't been able to grocery shop for my family, and I can't wait to be able to do that. I can't wait to go hiking, to ride the subway with a buddy, you know, and feel more safe and, and comfortable. They say, you know, dogs are the man's best friend. Well, he's definitely a girl's best friend, too. All of this for the vets and for everybody that they help um, is unbelievable to have somebody watching out for you. It's really special. They do so much behind the scenes that we don't see. 
If you're a veteran and you're wondering, do I deserve a service dog? Do I qualify for one? I would say yes. If you think you need a service dog, then just reach out and apply for one. To raise a dog for someone else takes a special, you know, uh, type of kindness. And uh, just know that we are all so thankful and I'm so thankful to be here, to have him. It means so much, <laughs> so much. <laughs> Today, we've met many heroes, and we're grateful for them all. We're grateful for our dogs. They make miracles happen. We're grateful for our veterans. Veterans, we appreciate your service and wish you the best as you begin a new, exciting chapter in your life. We're grateful for our volunteers and donors. And if you're one of them, thank you so much for bringing our mission to life. Now, if you're new to Southeastern Guide Dogs, welcome, and I hope you'll consider joining our family. To learn more, go to guidedogs.org. Friends, it has been a pleasure and a privilege to share this Dogs of Destiny with you. And now, as we say goodbye, please remember that together we're changing the world, one dog at a time, one life at a time. Take care. Maybe your faith has been shaken. Maybe you're feeling alone. Even old friends somehow drifted away. Seems like you're fighting this world on your own. Now is the time to remember There are two of us facing our fate And though you've been tried by the burdens you bear I'm here to carry the weight You can count on me You can count on me Ready and willing whenever you need Let's follow or I'll take a lead Count on me You can count on me Two silhouettes facing into the sun Count on me Love is my only agenda Devotion is my only creed I don't criticize and I never tell lies And your love is all that I need But you can count on me You can count on me Ready and willing whenever you need I'll gladly follow or I'll take the lead So, 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 so,